Okay, so you've made it to the second video. The second video is all about annotation. So we're going to be taking our data, finding points on a map, and dropping pins at those points. In our case, it's gonna be a starting point and an ending point, and then we're going to customize the annotations so that the starting annotation and the ending annotation look visually different, so you can see them right away on a map that there's two different things being marked here and kind of get a sense of what we're marking. And so that will be the second video. So if you've been following along, great job. Let's jump right in. Okay, okay, welcome back, welcome back. So what are we doing today? If you've watched the previous video and you're here with me, great job. You're learning a lot and we have a little bit more to do. So the next thing we're gonna do is work on how to drop annotations onto a map and then we're going to polish things up a bit and add custom annotations. So where do we start? The first thing we want to do is we want to create a function that adds pins. So now that we have data and we have a route data, which is, a, which is an array of coordinates, of CL location coordinates, I want to use those coordinates to drop a start and end pin because we're gonna be working our way towards creating a route. And so I want the user to know, so I want, I want the user to know where they started and where they ended, as opposed to just drawing a route on a map and not knowing where the starting point was and where the ending point was. And so the first thing we want to do is add pins. And so what we're gonna do, the first thing we, I want you to do is to follow along and add a add pins function. And this is gonna be responsible for adding our pins to the map. And so we're going to, first we're gonna check if our route coordinates is not zero. Now, I know that our, mine isn't zero, but if you're working with other data or returned data or data that you don't have complete control over, you wanna make sure that there's actually data. You wanna make sure that you actually have data to work with. And so the first thing I forgot is that I'm checking the, the size of the array. So basically, if the route coordinate, route coordinates array isn't zero, is the count of that is not equal to zero, then I know that there's something in there. And so I can proceed. And so we're gonna say, let our start pin, because this is the pin that I want um, at the beginning, I'm gonna say MK point annotation. Um, more, there we go. And make sure I give it some braces, brackets. Oops, what did I just do? And make sure I give it the parentheses. Okay, and then any point annotation object has some variables you can work with, like it has title, an image and I'm just going to use the I'm going to use the title and I'm going to set that to start and this is going to be important in a bit but for right now trust me and follow along you just want to give your start pin a title and we're going to call it start and then we want to give it a coordinate because it needs to know where on the map to drop itself right and so we're going to give it a CL location coordinate 2D oh and of latitude and longitude. And again, to make things easy to read, I'm just going to clean this up just a little bit. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I feel like it'd be easier for some of you to follow along. And also we're gonna remove that because we don't need that right now and that can get a bit distracting. So we're gonna say the for the latitude, we know that our route coordinates array is an array of CL location objects. And so we want the first element in the array because that's the first coordinate in our route and we want the coordinate and we want the latitude and then we want to do the same thing for the longitude so route coordinates we want the first element we want the coordinate and we want the longitude perfect and then all we have to do is map view because that's the name of the map we've created let map view and so map view so if you didn't name yours map view you're gonna have to use the name you used but we if you're following along, you named yours map view like I did. And so you just want to add annotation and we want that to be our start pin. Great. So now we have our start pin on the map. We also want the user to be able to see where, where they ended, right? And so we're going to say let end pin equals MK point annotation and end pin. Oh, the capitalization always gets me. There we go. Clean that up end pin dot title equals end and then it's going to be well end pin i almost wrote start pin dot coordinate equals same thing cl location coordinate 2d 
I always do that with the space for some reason. And same thing. We're just going to clean this up here to make it a bit easier to read. You don't have to do this, but I like to. Okay. And so now, how are we going to get the last coordinate? Luckily enough for us, there is a way to do this very easily. You want route coordinates dot last. And if you, if I go back there, you'll see if I hover over last, the last element of the collection. And so we want the last element because we know that the last element is, will be where it ended. Now, the great thing about this is that let's say, for example, our array only had one object in it and it was the, so our zeroth element would be selected as the start and our last element would also be the zeroth element, which would also be the start. So it'd be a bit weird because you'd be dropping your pin at the same point, but at least, you know, there, it wouldn't, your project wouldn't crash because uh, essentially that's correct. You, you start and end point is the same place. And the more coordinates you have, the, you know, the further, if each coordinate is further from the start pin, the further your route will be. And so we'll say route coordinates dot last, and then same thing dot coordinate dot, and this is the latitude. So you want dot latitude, and then you just want to go down here and then so route coordinates, what? not route data, route coordinates dot last dot coordinate dot longitude. Okay. And then same thing like we did for the end pin. We want to say map view dot add annotation end pin. Okay. So we're getting an error here and we're, it's failing us. The value of optional must be unwrapped. And so the great thing is we also checked if our route coordinates dot count was not equal to zero so that we know that because we know that there's, we're only getting to this block if there's even, um, objects in our array that we can actually force unwrap this. There we go. Right? So we can force unwrap our optional cause we've kind of already done a check to make sure that this was safe to do now. So remember we have to add this function somewhere, otherwise it doesn't run. And so we're going to go up here and underneath. So we've set our map constraints. We've got, we've got our JSON. We parsed our JSON if we got it successfully. Right. And so add pins and we can do this outside of this here. If we want, you could do it inside and, or you could do it outside. And the reason we're okay doing it outside is again, we've checked if this isn't equal to zero. So if it's equal to zero, because we've already, it, then nothing's changed. We weren't able to get the JSON and nothing will happen. Now, if you didn't do that check, the smart place to put it would be in under this if let block. Okay. And so we're going to press play and yeah, there we go. So it's really far away, but if we zoom in by pressing option shift and zooming into where we dropped our pins and so if you weren't following along on where I dropped the pins up until this point, it's getting more obvious now, but we dropped the pins on the small island of Jamaica here. And the reason we did that is because the route I found was for a cycling route between Montego Bay and Kingston. So that's the route that we're going to use. It was just the one that I felt I wanted to use because it seemed cool. Okay, perfect. So we have pins showing up on our map. What do we do now? We, so that's cool, but let's take it up a notch and let's add our own pin. And so in our assets folder, if we go back out and you go back out to my desktop, I saved some custom assets to use for just this project, which you'll also have access to if you check out the GitHub repo for this project. And so these are some custom pin annotations because I want to be able to be able to tell the start pin and the end pin apart. I don't want them to look the same. Okay. And so where do we do this? And so we do this at the bottom of the project here. And so the reason why I created this extension under here is because I want all my MK map view delegate functions in one place. I don't want them clogging up my project. I want them at the bottom. Okay. And so the first one that we want to use is view four. And if we just type that out, you'll get the autocomplete will help you and you'll get view for annotation. Make sure that you're selecting this one view for annotation, not view for overlay, not cluster annotation, not renderer for you want this one view for annotation. Perfect. 
So now that you have that in your project, the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the annotation is not the user's location. Okay, and return nil. And that's just to save both me and you because I don't want this accidentally dropping my um, my my location onto the map. Now I know this won't happen because of my data, but just because for your project and what you might be using, this might be a really important thing to include. And so you just wanna make sure that that's doing that there. Okay, the next thing is that this will always return, and this has to have a return, and we're going to return um, our annotation view, which we haven't created yet. So if Xcode freaks out at you, don't worry, but we're going to remedy that. But I just like to put that at the end to remind myself that you know, this has, we have to return something from this function. Perfect. And so now it's going to scream because this doesn't even exist. So let's make it exist. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is var annotation view, right, is equal to map view dot dq reusable annotation with identifier. And we're just going to call this custom. And that's the name of the identifier. The next thing. Okay, the next thing we need to do is we need to check if the annotation view is nil, because and that would be if this is the first time it's being created, and so we want to create the view, else, oh, caps lock, else we want to assign an annotation, because it's already been created, and we actually just want to assign an already existing annotation, okay? And so up here, we're going to create the view. And so annotation view, oh, caps lock again, annotation view equals MK annotation view of annotation with reuse identifier. And we're just going to say annotation, which we're getting from up here. And the reuse identifier is custom. Okay. And then assign annotation is annotation view dot annotation equals annotation. All right, there we go. So now we need to set the images. And so we're going to say, we're going to set custom annotation images. Okay. And so we're going to do this with a switch statement because I think it looks a little cleaner than using a nested for loop or a for loop. Okay. So, or sorry, a nested if else block. And so we're going to do switch annotation title and we're going to create our switch. And so we want to do this. Uh, we want to make a case for N. And if you're wondering where we're getting these uh, strings, I'll let you know in a second. I like to do my switch statements in like some form of order. So if it's numbers numerically, if it's words, then uh, alphabetically um, and so default. Okay. And so those are the three cases we're going to need. And so where are we getting start and end, right? And so if you remember, I made you, when I made you add your pins, I made you give them titles. And so if the start pin title is start, do something. If the end pin, if the annotation pin title is end, then do something else, right? And so case end, we want to do something. Case start, we want to do something and default. If it's default, because we have no other option, I just want to break. I actually don't want to do anything. If it's, however, if the name of the annotations title is end, I want to show our custom end pin. So it's annotation view dot image equals UI image um, named. And what name did we give it? Assets. We gave it pin end and pin start. Perfect. That makes everything very easy to remember. So we want to go back here and we want to go pin, oh, not capitals. And we have to make sure that this is exactly Oh, exactly how you wrote it out. And so pin end or, okay, great. So it's not that. So we're actually just going to copy this line because it's the exact same line. And the only thing changing is the name of the image, which is start. So we're going to give ourselves some space here. Okay. So now we're going to build and run. And this is all we had to do to get a custom annotation going. Now, if you only had one custom annotation and you're not doing a start and end pin, then you don't need this switch statement at all. You don't need to worry about setting the image for a particular annotation. You could just essentially remove this entire block of code and just kind of have this, this, and the return at the end. Okay. So we're just going to give that a play. 
and make sure everything is working as we want it. And it isn't. I wonder why that could be. And so one thing that we need to make sure that we did is that we set the view controller to be the NK map view delegate in this extension. But if I, I don't remember us actually setting the delegate. And so we're going to say map view dot delegate equals self. We're going to do that right up here in booted load. And so that way that function should be called. Yep. And there we go. So there's our start and end pins. And every time we have to zoom in to see our stuff, we're going to fix that too. So don't worry about that too much. But as you can see, we're using our own custom annotations that we dropped into the project between our start location and our end location. Okay. And so this is where this tutorial is going to end because again, like I said, I want to make these very digestible. And so the very next video, if you continue following along with me is how to add a route between these two annotations. How do you add a route or a line essentially between your start pin and your end pin? All right. So if you're interested in that, uh, see you in the next video.